Now, what's better than fast rural internet? Double fast rural internet. Duh. Welcome back and thanks for checking out yet another video. Today I'm going to talk about load balancing routers and show you how I use one at my home. Now a load balancing router is just basically a router that allows you to use two or more broadband connections for your home network. It directs traffic in a way that's efficient and fast using both connections so that one doesn't get overloaded. You can also use a load balancing router to ensure that you stay connected in case one of your broadband connections fails, it can fail over and go to your other broadband connection so you'll stay connected in the chance that one of your connections goes down. Now before we get into a fight in the comments, I can hear some of you now. Well, why would you need two broadband connections? And who can afford two broadband connections? It sounds expensive. Well, for most of us in rural areas, sometimes we have no choice because the options that we have are so slow, we need two broadband connections just in order to stay connected if one goes down or to have two networks so everyone in the house can use internet at the same time. In a lot of these areas, we don't have DSL or the old satellite internet. And a lot of times you can be on one watching Netflix, but then nobody can do anything else. And if the kids have school or you have work, then you need that other connection to be able to get those things done as well. But what a load balancing router allows you to do is combine both of those connections to allow you to use them in one home network without having to switch Wi-Fi connections or switch devices over to another network. Basically, you can have them on the same network using both broadband connections. Now, the title's a little misleading. You're more than likely not gonna actually double your speed using a load balancing router. It's different from a WAN bonding router. A WAN bonding router takes two broadband connections, two or more broadband connections, and combines all of the throughput. A load balancing router, doesn't exactly do that. Although you may notice throughput increases on speed tests, as I'll show you a little later. What it does is basically balance the load between both of your connections so that one broadband connection is not taking too much of the weight and the other broadband connection can pick up the weight. That can be adjusted. You can adjust which broadband connection takes up more weight than the other. Depending on what's needed, the load balancing router can also decide it for itself. Also, you can just use it in failover mode where you're just using one broadband connection as your main broadband connection. And in case that one goes down, it jumps over to your other broadband connection, thus keeping you connected in case of an outage. Today, I'm gonna to go over the two load balancing routers that I've used, share my experience, and give you the pros and cons for each one based on what I've experienced with them. First, we got the Ubiquiti Edge Router X. And then we got the TP-Link SafeStream we're gonna go over each one's features and I'll let you see them in action. I'm not really gonna do a setup in this video because that's gonna to take too much time. But basically, trust me when I say the setup is not hard and they, they both come with clear instructions or, and there's a bunch of tutorials out there and other YouTube videos that can show you how to set up these routers. So with that being said, let's get into it. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Now, without going too in depth, here's a basic diagram of my network setup. I have my MoFi, which uses my Verizon network, and I have my Nighthawk, which uses my AT&T network, both connected via Ethernet into the WAN inputs on my load balancing router. From there, I have a LAN output going from my load balancing router to my Orbi, which is set in access point only mode thus completing my home network. Here's the deal, folks. Gary and Wyatt, they created me on their computer. I'm not going to stand here and listen to this baloney. He won't, you know. He doesn't stand for baloney. Now, first, we have the Ubiquiti Edge Router X. Now, this router came out about five or six years ago and retails anywhere between $50 to $80. It's not a large device. As you can see, it fits right into my hand. It's designed a little different. The lights for the active Ethernet ports are at the top of the router, and at the front of the router, you have your five gigabit Ethernet ports. You have a power over Ethernet, where this device can be powered either by power over Ethernet or by a power adapter. You have your three LAN slash WAN gigabit Ethernet ports that you can configure either way as LANs or WANs. Then you have your LAN slash 
power over ethernet pass through where you can power another device over power over ethernet and this device's power such as an access point or a switch now setup for the edge router x is pretty easy in fact initially it comes with a bunch of wizards to help you configure the router to whatever configuration is best for you whether it's WAN failover or if it's load balancing or if it's just setting up the router in a regular configuration now i'm using my ipad pro 12 to access this interface via the web browser for some reason when i do that i can access the device but none of the statistics and graphs show up as active when i do that if i do it from a windows laptop you can see all the graphs and devices right now i'm using the ipad pro so you can't see it since i'm using my ipad pro we're going to access the edge router on my network by using the unms app or also known as the UISP app. This is an app that lets you access the interface and control certain things in the edge router while on a mobile device. You can access both WAN inputs, either turn them off, turn them on, select which one is active, or you can control the flow of data from each WAN input, and you can just monitor the data coming from each WAN input. This app allows you to reboot the router and do a lot of other basic functions of the router. However, to set up the router, I would recommend using a laptop, either iOS or a Windows-based laptop, so you can access the web browser interface, because this allows you a lot more control of a lot more features on the Edge router. Now let's check out the performance of the Edge router. This first test is just gonna be with just one WAN turned on. This one is gonna be my Verizon for my MoFi. We're gonna do a couple of speed tests and see how it performs. This next test is going to be with the AT&T from my Nighthawk turned on and the MoFi and the Verizon turned off. Let's check out how this performs. Now this test is with both It's going to work. I knew it would. My God, I knew it would. Next, we have the TP-Link SafeStream Gigabit Multi-WAN Router. Now, this router is designed to be part of the larger TP-Link Omada network system, but you can use this router by itself. Now, this router is just a little bit bigger than the Edge Router X, and it has the traditional design of a switch where it has its five gigabit ethernet ports on the front along with the indicator lights to let you know which port is active and in use. Now this is a gigabit VPN router with a bunch of security features and also has load balancing. Unlike the Edge Router X, it doesn't have a bunch of wizards to help you with setup, but it does have a quick installation guide, which is easy to follow. And throughout its interface, it has a bunch of question marks to help guide you through which configurations do what things for the router. Its menus are pretty simple to understand. You got the drop down menu where you can see the network, configure the WANs, how many WANs you want. You can put up to four WANs on this one router. Now as a default on the TP-Link router, load balancing is turned on, but you can turn it off. You can use it as failover only, or you can select certain IP addresses on your LAN network to only route traffic through certain WAN inputs, 
or you can choose which input you want to have the heavier load and which one you don't, or you can just keep it load balanced as the default. Now let's check out the performance with the TP-Link SafeStream with a couple of speed tests. These first two are gonna be with my MoFi and Verizon turned on and the Nighthawk and AT&T turned off. So this is the MoFi and the Verizon only. These next couple will be with my Nighthawk and AT&T only with the MoFi and Verizon turned off. For light speed. No, 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 light speed is too slow. Light speed too slow? Yes, we're gonna have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> ludicrous speed. Now these last two are gonna be my load balance Verizon and AT&T ISPs used together. Now let's do a quick rundown. Both routers do not have Wi-Fi capabilities, so you would need some access point or an additional router attached to the router to enable Wi-Fi throughout your house. But both routers can be used as standalone units if you just want a wired network, or they can be used in conjunction with switches and a controller for a larger part of a small enterprise or advanced home network. Both routers have gigabit ports that are configurable and both routers have load balancing capabilities. Both routers are sturdily built and also compact in size so they don't take up much space. The Edge Router X does have power over ethernet and power over ethernet pass through. The TP-Link does not. The TP-Link has many VPN features and firewall security features that the Edge Router doesn't seem to have. And most importantly, both routers are reasonably priced. One thing I forgot to mention, to avoid double NAT, you may wanna put your modem or your router that you're using for your WAN inputs into either bridge mode or have IP pass through on. For my network, I don't do either. Instead, the IP addresses that both the MoFi and the Nighthawk assigned to my load balancing router, I put them in the DMZ of both the MoFi and the Nighthawk and this allows my load balancer router to pass through the firewall on each device. Now, I am no IT expert, so this is just basically scratching the surface. I just basically use the load balancing router to help my home network's performance. If you have two internet sources at your home, whether it be two DSL lines or DSL and LTE, or maybe you have Starlink and T-Mobile or Starlink and Verizon, and you wanna combine them to help your home network's performance, Maybe you can try one of these load balancing routers. Both of them will be in the description below, along with my Amazon affiliate links. So please help brother out and click on them if you decide to get one. Anyway, I hope this information was helpful. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. I'm here to help. Thank you, you've been helpful. <laughs>